machine that way. So if the firing pin is broken or stuck forward, that's a definite design feature. This has no spring in it to retain it. All the retention is done by the groove in here, camming it back and forth. So make sure your firing pin moves back and forth nice and clean. Is there any kit to make it, to put a spring in? That would be a bad thing, I think. Okay, so, has everybody wiped off the back lugs of their bowl? Okay, so what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna put on my glasses. We're gonna get the red pen out if we need it on a new gun. And we're gonna get the flashlight out. And we're gonna look at the lug bearing. Can you see the scrape marks in there? Just if I hold it right? Okay. See how it's not touching this outside edge at all? See that? Okay. Oh, it's got a dimple in the middle there? Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So I've highlighted in red what you should see as a wear pattern if you had perfect lug engagement. If this bolt was fitted perfectly, those red spots would be shiny. And we also use the red permanent marker when we're lapping bolts in to try the fit. Put a little bit of this stuff on there, you work the bolt a couple times, and then you'll see the wear pattern. If your bolt doesn't look like that, shiny and dull, then your bolt is not fitting 100%. Oh. <laughs> erratic, you see erratic, uh, not very good uh, lug bearing there. Hmm. Has this gun even been shot much? Not that much. We tried to lap it last time. Remember the bolt and that was very hard? Yeah. Yeah, this one here isn't showing much for wear at all, but we can easily put the red lock or the red red on it and work it through. So this angle here, okay? And the bolt at an angle about like this to acute. So what happens is in less than 500 rounds, the left lug would collapse because it was only wearing on the outside edge, just a thin little knife edge. And the left side of the lug would have up to 25,000 head space. The right side would still be good, because they didn't grind on that one the wrong way. So whatever jig they were using, it slipped, or the guy lost his eye that day, or whatever. So the left side of the lug is the critical one for the M14, because it's smaller. So the more engagement you can get on there, the better. And when that bolt wears on only one side, the actual uh, receiver stays true but the bolt gets cocked in the receiver as it moves to one side of the lug bearing, uh, moves over, and your ammunition is no longer true to the board. But it's coming in off that extractor, which holds it tight against the, the bolt. So when it's not true to the bore, well, you can imagine, you know, it's not as good as it could be. So you want to have good lug bearing on both lugs evenly. And in many of these guns, you'll have no lug bearing at all on the left lug. Many mean one in maybe 50 or one in 100. So this is something that's very, very important to you in terms of accuracy and uh, longevity. Put them in behind the right lug of the bolt. And boom, that doesn't work. See, that won't go down. Yeah? That won't go down, okay? So we find the gauge that that goes down on. See, that one went down on a 10 thou gauge, okay? So we're going down even further to probably about 6 thou.
Okay, that won't go down on a six thou gauge. So this a, one is really tight. I think this was a four thou. What? I think this was four thou. No, no, but that's not with headspace. We haven't put the headspace gauge in yet, right? We're just checking bolt to a receiver fit. So, four thou, and it does go down all the way, okay? So this one here has a tremendously good bolt to receiver fit. We haven't even talked about headspace yet. If everything else is right, this will be the tightest chambered one. But there's no play in there, there's no rattle in there. And it goes all the way down. That's how you measure it. With it all the way down, put it close on that gauge and then the gauge is tight. So that's a fourth thou gauge, okay? We'll try that on your gun and pass the gauges around and get a rough idea. And that's also how we measure headspace after we throw the headspace gauge in. Our correspondence between the outside diameter at the back of the bolt and the inside diameter at the receiver, which will have something to do with how well the trigger uh, gets cocked and you know whether the hammer falls. Six won't go, so four is probably good. So it's 18 at the front and six at the back. No, no, that's that's the, the outside diameter of the bolt in this fit, okay? Four goes in. Six goes in. Eight won't go. Okay. You want to do yours? Well, you don't need to do yours. Do you want it? No problem. We'll just need to suck it with a hammer and anything. Okay. Let's try it. Eight won't go. Six won't go. Four goes. Okay, so that's nice and tight. So if the bolt is sloppy in that receiver at the back there, it can pop up when the hammer cams it. Instead of going, you know, nice and tight, it jumps up. And then the next shot, as it comes back with the hammer cocking it, the bolt actually rides up on the hammer. Let me show you this. Okay. Can I have a bolt? To Okay, so as the bolt comes back, it cocks the hammer, okay? And as it cocks the hammer, it's forced up against the top of that receiver. And if there's too much play up there, it doesn't cock the hammer far enough to catch the lugs. And that's a real hard thing to diagnose if you haven't done this little run of, run of, run of things. If you change, change bolts and your gun doesn't cock, that's why, because this edge here is worn down too much. So once again, as the bolt comes back, it goes like this, and it rides up on the bolt at the top of the receiver, right? And if that dimension is too bad, then it won't go down far enough to cock the bolt, or cock the uh, hammer. Is that making sense to everybody? Yeah. Okay, so this is how we diagnose some of the trigger things that are happening. So everybody's got a fairly happy bolt. The last and most expensive part of the game is, do I need a GI bolt? That man over there has whole bunch of USGI bolts in his basement. No kidding. Okay, this is a headspace gauge. Notice that they're ground out in the back so we can run them without having to skip the bolt. If you try and check your headspace with a normal gauge that isn't relieved for the ejector, you're pushing against about a 50 to 100 pound spring. No way in the world you can get an accurate reflection of your headspace with the ejector in a gun with a standard headspace gauge. So, Starting from the back. Can you put that in your chamber and catch that groove so they go on to your ejector? There. With your with your yeah. Yeah, so you've got to come over the uh, you've got to come over that. Okay, so that's gotta be right at the bottom. Yeah, put it put it in a bit. No, no, not one with a scope. We'll get one without a scope, okay? No, I can't do it. Well, we'll try it without a scope, okay? Without one with a scope. Okay, so where's your bolt? Okay, so one way of doing this is to put this into the extractor groove, and you notice like it comes like this, and you see how the ejector is there, and the extractor is holding it in place, right? Yeah. Okay. Then, if you're very careful and you hold your lips just right, it is possible to feed this entire mechanism.
Okay. Well, I'll be darned. You see that? He's got a very tight chamber. That is, of course, maximum. So his gun is safe to shoot.